All right, so very exciting. We have reached a key point in the course because for the very first time, we're gonna add a product to the site. We're gonna start this, this is gonna start, start feeling very real now. So there are two types of products. You have simple products and you have variable products. And we're gonna start with simple products. Now a simple product is just that. There's no variation, so it's just one size, one color, that's it. A variable product, as you might expect, has several uh, sizes maybe, several colors, maybe other variations. A good example of a variable product would be a t-shirt, for example, which comes in different sizes and probably different colors. So I'm gonna start with this, this simple product and you know, as you know, I'm doing the dog jewelry um, niche is one of the things I, I've done in the past. And this particular product I have sold in the past and it has worked well for me. You're very welcome to, uh, to steal it from me. <laughs> I won't come after you. So, um, you know, that's for free. So, but it's also a very nice um, demonstration of uh, what, a, what a simple product actually is. So the first thing you wanna do when you're identifying a product is, as we looked at in one of the previous lectures, which was entitled Deciding What to Sell, where I took you through some sort of golden rules, if you like, of what makes a good product. So you have a very, very good head start. So let's look at those right now. So the first one was the price. Yeah, we need a price under $4. So here we are at $1.19. So we're well below that. And in fact, we can get it for $1.06 apparently when the, uh, the, the moment when the sale starts. Um, but anyway, we're well within our price range. Can we sell this between 15 and 20? Well, I know that we can, I, I have in the past. So yes, there's good markup on jewelry. That's one of the reasons I'm into it. Is it heavy? No, it's not, it weighs nothing, so that's great. Is it fragile? It's a little bit fragile, but it's not gonna break in transit. This is not a you know a glass jar or something like that. It's not gonna smash up in, in transit, so you don't have to worry about that. High quality images, very, very important. I'll show you the images a bit further down on the screen in a minute, but you can see some of the stuff here. Yes, these are good images. Yeah, when I zoom in on them, I can see that I'm not looking at blurry images. It describes the product well. It's so important to have high quality images. Um, is it branded in any way? No, it doesn't have any sort of uh, weird brandings on there. Uh, you know, it's not trying to be um, some famous jewelry brand or anything like that with a badly written brand name on it. <laughs> Nothing like that. So we're all good to go there. Um, can it be found at Walmart? In other words, you know, is it is it everywhere is really what I'm trying to say in that particular point, as you know. So no, it's not. It's not something that you're going to walk down to your local store and find. It's, you know, specific to specific sites. So you could probably buy this online, but you'd probably have difficulty buying it offline. Um, now, does it solve a problem? Of course it doesn't, but it does cater to a passion, yeah? The, this, uh, people will buy this stuff because, yeah, they're, they're passionate about their pets and their dogs, many of us are, me included. So, and this one is particularly related to rescue dogs, which is also a very interesting market as well, which you might wanna look into. Um, now, let's have a look at the supplier. So we got great feedback, 97.5%. Person's been going for two years, which is fantastic. Lots of diamonds there, 3,379. So yeah, it's looking good. Have they got plenty of stock? Yes, they have, 999 pieces available down here. So that's also a very good sign. Uh, and the last thing, do they provide e-packet? Well, let's have a quick look on the shipping and sure enough, they do. So for me, that checks out on all of my, my golden rules and I can move forward and put this on my site. Now, there are many, uh, well not many, there are a few, and one in particular that's very well known, which I'll come to later on, which is uh, a product, software products, that allow you to automatically put products onto your site. But nevertheless, it's important that you understand how to put the thing on manually, and you'll see how easy it is uh, as I go through this right now. So all I need from AliExpress are the photographs, and to do that is very, very simple. You just scroll down, and here they are, down the bottom here. Right mouse click and just do a save image as onto your PC, Mac, whatever you're using. Um, and then uh, I'm gonna show you how to import that and actually create a product on your page in a sec. I won't leave you here watching me do this. Uh, I'll do this right now and I'll see you in a second. Okay, fantastic. So back here on the admin system. Now, all we need to do is go to products and click on add product. 
So for each product, we've got three main aspects. We've got the title, we've got the description, and we've got some images. So let's start with the title. So with your title, keep it succinct. Yeah, I see some people just literally taking the title from AliExpress. And as you've seen, many of them are very, very poorly written. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to call it heart-shaped dog pendant. All right. Nice and simple says exactly what it is. There really is no ambiguity there whatsoever. Now, when it comes to the description, I always lead with a question. This is a great tip because a question makes people think. So with a product such as this, I would write, would you love to own this heart shaped, excuse me, I can't type, <laughs> dog pendant? Question mark. So there really is a subtle difference between that and saying something like buy this heart shaped dog pendant or own this dog, uh, heart shaped dog pendant. Do you see the difference? It's a very, very slight change, but it makes people think and it draws them into your product and increases the chance of you making a sale. Now, having led with that question, the next thing we want to do is add in some bullet points. And I will be talking about this in a bit more detail later on. But right now, the key is to keep it simple. OK. It's not going to be the text that sells your product or 10% of it, let's say, goes towards selling your product. The key thing are the images. And if you want any further proof of that, just go back to AliExpress and you will see that so often the English is terrible, yet they seem to sell millions and millions of products every single day. So I'm going to write here, show your love of dogs, high quality alloy and I'll finish off with beautiful silver silver <laughs> finish and that really is it for the description you know you really don't need to go into a huge amount more detail than that again looking back at people's sites I often see very lengthy descriptions it's off-putting it makes your site look very messy it looks cluttered so keep it simple you know you'll develop your own style over time of course but please try to stay within the sort of boundaries that I'm talking about certainly lead with that question and certainly have three to five perhaps bullet points that really just give a very nice feeling for the product so the next thing we want to do is look at the images so I've already taken the images off AliExpress as I described before. So all I need to do now is just upload them. So if I click on upload, I will take basically all of the images that I took from Ali here. And here we go, immediately imported into my product. Now I can move these around very, very easy, just drag and drop. I can edit them, I can do all kinds of things as well, but I really don't need to. All I need to do is just choose the lead image, which is obviously the biggest one, as you can see here. So I'm very, very happy with that. Those images for me are perfect. So what we've done there is we've got the three main things already in place, the title, the description, and the images. Now, what we're gonna move down to here, of course, is the key discussion about pricing. And you already know from previous lectures that we basically now want to sell at around the $20 mark. Okay, you can see mine's in euros. That's just because I'm in Europe. But uh, wherever you are, keep it around that sort of 20 euros, $20, whatever it is, type mark. Okay, now we've got two things here. We've got a price and we've got a compare at price. Now your compare at price can be a little bit confusing. That title sometimes is your price when it's not on sale. Okay, so... I might put that at, let's say, 25 euros. And I might have my price, in other words, the price the person is ultimately going to pay. And I might put that at 19, just for example. So what I've done there is I've put the product on sale to start with, okay? So it was, it was 25 normally. I'm giving it to them for 19. And I do that with every single product that goes onto my site when it's new. And with my system, if you want to follow my lead with that, I will keep it on my site for a week or perhaps two weeks. And then after that period, I will typically take it off. I don't want to have everything on sale on my site all the time because it kind of looks ridiculous. So that's my rule. New products, keep it on sale maybe for a week or two and then put it back to the original price. Now, as we go down through this, I'm going to ignore some things that you really don't need. First of all, infantry, okay? We are drop shipping. We do not stock 
anything. That's the beauty of this whole model, right? We're taking the product from Ali and you're going to see how this whole process works. But if you cast your mind back to that very first slide where I said how you will make money, you will remember that the product is stored with our supplier on Ali and that supplier is going to ship directly to our customer. We don't stock anything. We can therefore ignore all of this. Now for shipping, we do want to keep this just checked on because it does affect some of the pricing calculations later on, but really nothing to touch. And really that's it. And at the bottom, we just have this search engine listing preview. Okay, this is how it's going to show up in the search engine listings, which is a very nice little extra. So all we want to do now is click on save. And there we go. Brilliant. Congratulations. You've added your first product. Now I can now view this product by clicking on this little view thing here. So let's do that. And here we go. We got our heart shaped dog pendant. We've got that image that I chose, which is a good quality image. Here are my other images down here. Okay. All looking very, very good. I've got my add to cart button by default. It's on sale. Yeah, it was 25 euros down to 19, clearly marked as sale. And then of course my description. So as a first step, we're in very, very good shape. So let's just go back to our product page itself because I just want to draw your attention to a few things here. Now these things here, I'm going to leave to one side for the moment, but we will be coming back to this collections a bit later on because this is how we're going to group up products to build your site, to make it logical and easy for your customers to find all of your products in one place. But otherwise, you are now in very, very good shape. So what I would encourage you to do is to go to Ali, find some products and just go through what I've done. You know, maybe do three to five simple products, add them onto your site and get familiar with the process. As I said before, I will be showing you how to automate this, but it is really, really important to know how to do this manually. The automated system is not foolproof and you will need now and again to come back and do this. So enjoy doing that because in the next lecture, we're going to look at how to add a different type of product that's called the variant product. So great stuff and I'll see you very, very shortly.